the higher the life expectancy rate of a society, the more its people are considered healthy and more responsible of their lives. In Ghana, the life expectancy rate is 56 years. However, in some areas of the country, like the northern parts, the life expectancy rate is way above 56 years. Even though this ought to be considered a blessing, it isn't always. Old age in the northern and other parts of the country is considered more of a curse rather than a blessing, especially women as they are most often accused of possessing witchcraft. Instead of the people seeking the advice and wisdom of these aged people in moments of misfortune, they rather vent their anger on them and accuse them of being responsible for their misfortunes due to their beliefs. Unfortunately, many people, if I'm not mistaken, about 80% of Ghanaian elderly people are neglected. Some in the cities and most especially in the villages or rural areas. They leave them and it becomes difficult for them to care. They don't have even what to eat. Where to sleep is a problem. And they attach a stigma to them that they are witches and wizards. This weird belief of the people makes them attribute bad dreams, poor harvest, sickness and epidemics to witchcraft manipulations. The vulnerable, especially old and weak women are the group of people who always fall victim when the suspicion of the existence of witch or wizardry arises among the family or society. Witches camp in the northern region of Ghana. Many of the customs and beliefs of the majority people in the northern parts of the country are that women are suspected or seen as agents of witchcraft. In many of these societies, apart from the victim being beaten and driven out of the village, they are sometimes forced to drink on cautions to prove their innocence or are strangled to death. There was this old lady, I think she's, she was 87. She has been thrown out from the community. She lives all by herself in the woods somewhere. And there's this little girl who is with her and she takes care of this 87 year old, old lady. And we were told that this girl had to go and live with this old lady just because uh, this old lady is so attached or this little girl is so attached to this old lady. So people thought, because she's so close to this old lady, she's also a witch. So when they were sending her away from the community, this little girl had to go with her. With age, an individual becomes more prone to various diseases. In old age, every organ of the body needs special and extra care to ward away diseases or deformities. Heart problems, arthritis, osteoporosis, diabetes and all such conditions can be prevented to a great extent. We have just about 10% of elderly people who have one form of pension or the other. The rest were peasant farmers who produced our food and most of them didn't have any level of education. And the kind of pension systems we have recognized those in the formal sector. And so those of them doing their own businesses in the villages were not covered by the systems. And for which reason they come into old age or they retire from active work without, without any pension at all. You see, we have a triangular structure of society made up of uh, children, the youth, and the aged. Now, if we look at the aged at the pinnacle, with the children and the youth at the base, as a supporting base, supporting the aged, then we can see some hope. In this country of ours, at least we have the Ministry for Children and Women, we have the Ministry for Youth and Sport. Is it the social welfare which takes care of? The aged. This is the question that I would want to know. What I want to say is, aging, aged people in Ghana are no more happy 
they even want to die earlier. But because of the Almighty God, He has caring for them. Some have been neglected, even the families itself have been neglected them. You know, it's so, so, so pathetic sometimes to see an old person whose contribution to national development has been acknowledged in the past, but then the moment they are no more there to contribute, we don't even find them. We don't know where they live. There have been several elderly people who have helped this country in terms of sports, in terms of politics, in terms of security, in several other areas, whose lives now cannot be encouraging to anybody. Akrowa simply means, it's a gang way, simply means village. It is very simple. When you go to the villages, you find out that young people have left to big cities and abroad to look for work, or greener pastures, as I could put it. And the elderly people and young folks like kids, it's all that you see. And most of these elderly people are sick people. They cannot take care of these kids. And these kids cannot even take care of these elderly people because this, they are kids. And then when people are at this stage, they need professionals to come and help them. Because one might be sick. The kids cannot find out if somebody is sick. They don't know that. But professionals like social and healthcare offices can easily tell when they visit an old lady who is sick, they can easily tell what, what the problem could, could be. The health situation, the government promise, but he's not doing it properly for us had been written health care, health certificate, health insurance to ensure the patient is not doing, they are not doing it well for us. They are not doing it well for us. They have been promising health, renewing the changes, but the problem is they will write the drugs. When you go to the pharmacy, the pharmacy will tell you this drug is not here. You don't have to go and buy it. And what is the use of the insurance? So it is very, very, we have to care for the appealing. If the government says health insurance for the aged, for all people who has registered, they should get there for us all properly. We have just about 10% of elderly people who have one form of pension or the other. The rest were peasant farmers who produced our food and most of them didn't have any level of education. And the kind of pension systems we have recognized those in the formal sector. And so those of them doing their own businesses in the villages were not covered by the systems. And for which reason they come into old age or they retire from active work without, without any pension at all. Collins Wood is a gentleman who has forsaken all pleasures of life and has dedicated his life to taking care of the aged in Ghana with the help of the Danish government mobilizing funds and machinery to help cater for the old aged in Ghana. For seven years now, Akroa Age Life Foundation is working on exporting Danish healthcare system for the elderly people to Ghana. It's a system where elderly people get a kind of professional help and care, you know, in the areas where they can no longer function because of uh, sickness, you know, and old age. When I was growing up in Ghana, I was told, and I've seen it, I've experienced it, that elderly people are branded as witches, and they are sent to witch camps and stuff like that. I know it. I have been to crusades where the pastor has to preach or pray for elderly people who would think they are witches or which they think they are witches. I've experienced that. So all my life in Ghana, I've lived a life where I've been very, very scared of elderly people. And so when I got to Denmark and I found out that uh, this kind of system, elder care system, exists 
for elderly people, I thought, wow, these Danish people are crazy. Because when I found out that you have to have an education before you can take care of an elderly person, I thought that was crazy. Because like I said, in my country, we, we don't have this, you know. So out of curiosity, I decided to just go to the school to see what this elder thing, elder care thing is all about. We are on our way to Adan. There's a situation down there. We just had a call. There's an elderly man who needs our attention. So we're just driving to, driving to Adan to see what's happening. So here we are with Mr. Kutu, looking at this situation before and now, we're just trying to make life a little bit enjoyable for Mr. Kutu. So this is the kind of work we're doing, to, 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 we're just trying to help our elderly people in this country. One may ask, why are we doing this? It's because when people get older, sometimes people lose their memory. They, get attacked by dementia, Alzheimer, Parkinson, and so on and so forth. And when they get to this stage, they can no longer take care of themselves. It is so heartbreaking when you go to the villages especially. We met this old lady who has been crawling for the past seven years just in her room. And what we saw was that when she's crawling, she has some kind of energy both in her arms and her feet. So we thought, okay, what do we do for her? We gave her a walking frame and she walked for the first time in seven years. And as time goes on, we changed from the walking frame to a rollator. And there is somebody who's coming to help her go through this kind of a rehabilitation kind of thing in her home. Right now we are talking six years along the line, this old lady is not using any of these helping machines anymore. She's on her back on her feet. For me, it is, it, is, it is heartbreaking when you see these stories. We cannot see our elderly people living in this kind of deplorable kind of uh, 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 living conditions. So we should change it. Because these people have worked a lot. They have at least contributed their share to the development of this country. Akua Age Foundation is an organization that is up to help the aged people. They are in to support them, those that have been neglected, right at homes for so many years. There is, there is no hope for them anymore. But this foundation has come to give them another hope, to give them life that they can also belong to or belong as human beings that they can realize that they are still alive. Their hearts are beating all right, but they were not having strength to move anymore. But because of this foundation coming into being, their status or their health status will be renewed once again. We have registered elderly people in the villages. Some are sick and some are not sick. They are just old and they cannot help themselves. They cannot get out of bed and go to, to the bathroom or whatever. And we work at Taku and you are to me. Eh, Taku and you are to me. Minnow. Can't kind of ton ton. Eh, I'm a booty on to you. We have students from Social and Healthcare College in Aarhus, Denmark. That was where I got my education. Every month, we have two students, maybe four, three, two, three, four students from Denmark who comes to Ghana every month.
to work alongside the locals, the uh, volunteers. And they go from house to house to the elderly people. They give them all kinds of help they might need. They take them to the hospital, to the doctor's appointments when they need the help of a nurse. The nurse is coming home to the other people and give them the help, the kind of help they might need. Um, I would hope to achieve knowledge and that I've also been able to teach something that I, that my, and that I'm here, uh, that I've left an impact when I'm going back home, that my knowledge, you can use it for something. So the knowledge that we've uh, been educated with in Denmark. In Denmark, uh, the elderly care um, is very good. The elderly are never alone. Um, maybe they don't got any family, but um, the system will take care of them. This system we are talking about is inspiration from Denmark. The Danish people have done it, and you can see it is working. People are really enjoying it. The elderly people are really enjoying it. And it's the number one priority of the nation, Denmark. And this is exactly what we are trying to, you know, export to Ghana. Some of the things we do is that we go from village to village, tell people how to take care of their elderly people around their community. And then we recruit, you know, guys and girls and boys in these villages who have no jobs. And what they do is they go to these elderly people who might need our help to give them the kind of help they need. <laughs> We go around to help the aged. Some people they can wash, they can cook, and sometimes we take care of their health. Maybe checking the vitals, taking care of the knees, and massaging them, having some walk, and maybe feed, feed them, brush their teeth. Um, a lot, we do a I Care Health Training College is an institution that has been established in the year 2010 with the aim of training healthcare professionals. We as an institution have been fortunate to have a relationship with Acroa Age Life Foundation who are so helpful to us and recently have just donated demonstration items for us in the school to help us train the students professionally. They gave us student beds, wheelchairs, and lifts that are used to lift patients from the bed to the wheelchair, a whole lot of demonstrating items. It's so helpful to the student to the extent that they will now know how to use modern equipment and not the conventional ones that we've been using for so long. 
Yeah, we were very fortunate as well to have the Denmark uh, students uh, in ICARE. There are four in it as a team who came to visit us, to interact with our students. They taught them what they've been learning over there. Elderly care is um, nurses taking care of elderly ones who cannot do their normal duties, such as bathing for themselves, brushing their teeth, going to nature's call when they need to, and helping them do many of the things that, as they are sick, they cannot do them. The equipment that the Akrua Age Life Foundation brought from Denmark is very interesting. I think it's somehow difficult, but I think as a student and as a health worker, you have to be competent with those equipment. The machine, if we in Ghana here have it, it will be best because most of the nurses find it difficult to take care of patients, especially patients that maybe they are overweight, that they cannot help them raise themselves from bed. Even from the floor, the ground to the bed, and it also aids in, it prevents the patients from having backache and the neck ache. As long as the person can sit here, put the legs here and the hands here, that could be a way to move to the roller chair. We're here today because we want to, uh, to show what we have learned, what we have learned in Denmark about how to use the equipment. And uh, it's really important to know how to use it because you save your own body and you save the person's body. And it makes everything more smooth in the daycare for, the, for especially elder people or people that can't move. So um, you always work like, like a couple or you can be a team. So you are two every time you do it. You stay beside the beds and, and you do this thing. So you, you have to work really good together. I really like to, to, to be here and to be with the students. Um, they also teach me things here. It's not only us who's coming and, and especially they're always happy and that's very nice. So it has been a really good experience and a big experience also to do it in English, I think for all of us. So we will start from the bed. This seal you have to put in under, under the body probably. Take this one up here. Because we want to remove the person from to one side here. And then we want to... So we do that, okay. Mm -hmm. And we take the seal now. You don't use to to you, you don't need to use any strange here. It's it's really easy. Okay. People who are like experts in these areas in Denmark are behind us. They are strongly supporting what we're doing. Uh, at this moment, we have ambulances. We have all the helping machines, we get all the help we need to be able to get this project running. Uh, the experts in Denmark who are in these fields are working out something with the Ghanaian TUC. And then we are working out also some things with the Ministry of Health and the Social Ministry to be able to get this idea across to Ghanaians. As I mentioned, it is a bit difficult for us at present to give you some economic support for this. But we are certainly going to continue to discuss the issue with TUC. Soon we will start preparing the next phase of the program. And I think it would be crucial to include some element on old age and what could be done in Ghana. about supporting specific small centers. As mentioned, I think it's wonderful what you have done with Agrova Age Life Foundation. But I think that if you really want to change things in Ghana, you have to look at strategies and policies on this area, and how you will fund it, how you could develop this whole system. So it could become a national issue. And that's where I think, you know, trade unions could play a very, very active role in the social dialogue and pushing politicians and having people behind. We know that they have a lot of members, they are quite a force in Ghana. And this could be crucial if we could really 
get them on board and we will as mentioned continue our discussions. The Akrawa Aged Life Foundation will bring lasting solutions to some of the loopholes in our government structures that endangers the life of the aged, such as the pension scheme and the health systems in Ghana. <laughs> Me bahami ka de so to igenyo. Lele ni kete e ahelemi ni kwe na kwe mi e ndi enche na ke na hisi. Ko she he ko e ona e. Bore jo nyo ko e to me jo bo ya. Ona e. Se ba she he ko do nyo ni. To wa fe te ora, o ya tafla te ora ni ami. So na achi won ni tafla te o kan bore jo ni ni. A fe na kan. Ye na e. Yo no jino no wo to o fe. From a cross standpoint Policies must begin to roll towards making life comfortable for the elderly, especially for those who have already contributed, and more importantly, to those who are now coming. We need to prepare people adequately before they go into retirement. And the system should be such that whether you are a farmer in the corner of the village, you should be recognized and you should be assisted to contribute on something towards your old age. At the moment, we have a center which we call Tribal Center. And at this center, the elderly people come once a month and, you know, that's where they come to socialize, the elderly people. They come there to socialize. They play games. They, sometimes we hold parties. They come there to, like, what do you call it, to do some exercising, talk to other elderly people, you know, Sometimes we ask bands to come and play for them to enjoy themselves. It's a way of trying to, to motivate or activate the elderly people because it is good for them to do some kind of exercise. I'm very impressed, um, first of all, because I know that, uh, well, the health system can go f for one step, but uh, as they have described well, well, there are a lot of challenges um, and I'm impressed by the way that they uh, uh, try to uh, raise the issue of taking better care of elderly about among in the communities, talking to the chiefs and, and, and explaining them of the importance and in that way uh, helping um, the community as a whole to, to raise the focus on elderly. We want to, to, when we get the place that is well, you know, built yeah, is this uh, another place? Not to oh, oh, I see. This is just the one we have yeah. at the moment. Yeah. This is like a demonstration. Yeah. 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 So you can see. Yeah. But then when we have a rare place where they can play. Yeah. 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 What about the agriculture and all that from here? Yeah, yes, we, we, we're going to work on that. They are going back to sit down. Would that be together with the elderly center? Yes, yes, yes. yes. Yeah. It's in town to do the agriculture thing. Where will it be? Adam. That's nice. Yes. Very nice. Yes. Yeah. 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 The system we are talking about is like building a future for all of us. It doesn't matter your age. So, I think the young folks should start thinking about this now. Do not think that you are maybe 16, 17, 18, 19, so you will not get there. You were not born 20 years old. You were born like one day old, before you get to 20 years old. So as time goes on, you get there. So this is a system we are building. It's not for one person, it's for all of us. A system where all of us will get the kind of help we might need when we get there. Okay, so this is day one of our shoots and we are somewhere in Jamestown. And I must say, it's been an interesting journey coming all the way here. And we're here to see the three ladies we want to help as part of our charity project. And we are the beauties of change. So we're here to change their lives and put some smiles on your faces. So come in with us. So as we promised the three old women, we were able to deliver on our word with thanks going to Akroa Aged Life Foundation. They gave us beds, walking aids, wheelchairs, 
and crown paints also gave us paints for us to paint the whole place for them. And the most important thing, we didn't want this to be a short term something that we just go deliver the things and then leave them just like that. We were able to give them money for the upkeep as well. And Akroa Aged Life Foundation gave us healthcare cards that they'll be able to take to the hospital anytime they're not feeling well so that they'll be well taken care of. And also the beds are very, very comfortable enough so that even when they are lying down, they can still adjust it and be able to call someone to come in to help them if they need help. We supply medical equipment to the Pentecost Hospital and our elderly people on the project get medical help for free. And then the volunteers also get medical help for free. This center started when Akroa Age Life Foundation. Akroa Age Life Foundation is an NGO that takes care of elderly people. It is based in both in Ghana and Denmark. They, we have a collaboration with them. Actually, they've signed an MOU with Pentecost uh, Social Services, that PENSOS, so that they'll support us with equipment. So under this M M MOU, it is there to support uh, uh, PENSOS, both in health facilities and the educational facilities with this equipment. And then PENSOS institutions will attend, also take care of the elderly people who are on their uh, program. Currently, we have about 200 elderly men and women, both uh, found in Abokobi and then Teshinungwa under the care of Akroa Age Lab Foundation. So when they come here, together with the volunteers, we also take care of them free of charge so that they can also uh, get quality health care. And also whenever they come, they are taken care of as a priority uh, institution. And therefore, we are very, very proud that the board has been able to bring resources together and also through the, the support of Akroa Aged Life Foundation, we have been able to put up this center. The center that contains the blood bank and also diagnostic uh, center. The Akroa Aged Life Foundation will solve these problems when given the opportunity to introduce these mechanisms that seek to reduce the risk of chasing pension payments from their long-term life savings whilst they were working for the government and their private institutions. And so we are looking at it, trying together with others to develop our own system that will help the youth today so they don't fall into the place of the elderly people we have currently. My voice has <laughs> <laughs> Hey, I can sing though.